So finally, Queen Mother Hagar tells us from the mouth of God in Genesis chapter 16, you ought to raise up your mother. So what do we do about this now that we know this true? Well, I've known it since 2007. It's been 14 years that I've been aware, very much aware of this, and I've preached it, taught it, held trials, and marched, and well, protested, and everything else I could possibly do to try to make it work. But I think it's important now that we understand um, how this, this, this secret or this, and this, 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 this perpetration of a white man upon black people because he has a dark skin and a, and, a, and a black father was wrong. And as a result of that, he has stolen from the people their dignity and their, and, and their heritage. Now, I've tried to express this. He has corrupted the churches because they, you know, they don't know the Bible. I mean, for any preacher, any preacher to stand up in a church with the Bible on his, on his lectern and say that Obama is black is blaspheming. Because this Bible says, preacher, you are lying to the people. Read your Bible, preacher. Preachers, read your Bible. You are the race of your mother, not of your father. The Bible says it in Hagar, who is your mother, you black preacher. You have my preacher. I don't like the term black. But have my preacher. Your mother is Hagar. And she's a black woman. And God spoke that you can only be the race of your mother. Obama got a white mama. When a preacher stands up or anywhere else and says that Obama is black, he is blaspheming and displaying the most vile kind of ignorance of the word of God and perpetrating a fraud upon the people and upon the flock. I want to ask you to come up close for just one second, and I, I want to talk to three year and older veterans of the uh, Trust in Lord Hour, uh, the Open Rewards Prayer Meeting, the Manning Report, and the Pulpit of Power, those four ministries that we do every week, uh, producing at least 20 different ministries or sermons every week. If you are a three year or older veteran, by old I mean four years, five years, six years, seven years, 10 years, 12 years uh, old veteran, of, of any of these ministries that we do on a daily basis every week, and you are not a supporter, you've not joined with the, uh, the ministry to give your, uh, to pledge your support and your alignment with what we've been teaching. I, and I, my question is why? I, you've had three years to observe us. You've had three years to listen to us on a daily basis, all weekend, all day long, any hour of the day. We're uh, broadcasting uh, you've had three years to watch our various successes. You've three years to watch our ups and downs. You've had three years to listen to the tenor or the consistency of what we have said, whether we are consistent or whether we are all over the chart and what we do and what we believe. You've had three years to watch people around us who have made the commitment to join with our ministry and church and to financially support it. And by the way, I want to give another shout out to Brother Jesse Munez out there in San Bernardino, along with uh, uh, Goldfinger, who is just an extraordinary giver, and others that do extraordinary uh, giving to our ministry. My question is to you, if you are a three-year veteran or older, why haven't you joined? Why haven't you committed? And I suppose some of the reasons would say, well, Pastor Man, I belong to another church. And uh, why? How could you, how could you, after three years of hearing me teach about the Sabbath, about righteousness, about the tribulation, and listen to me faithfully as you do, and still go sit up in another pastor's face? How could you be? It's like you, it's like a woman sleeping with two men. You know, one she likes during the week and the other she likes on the weekend. It is it's hypocritical. Um, how could you do that? I mean, as I say, you started three months ago. I can understand. Well, it may take you some time to evaluate. It may take you some time to look at me, to discover you know, who I am. You say, well, pastor, that's not that I don't belong to another church or ministry. I, I, you, I'm with you. But there's some things you say I like, and there's some things you say I don't like. Why? Why is it that some, you, you've made a decision that there's some things that, that you don't like are stronger than the things that you do like. 
I, you know, I am not a psychiatrist, but I am an analyst. And I have to tell you, I analyze the world and our understanding. The, the understanding and wisdom tells me this, that if there are things that a person such as myself that I am saying, there, there is no room to disagree with what I am saying, unless your purpose is to find something to disagree with. Let's say, for instance, you say, well, I like the fact that you talk about Obama, but I don't like the fact that you talk about Trump. Let's, let's say, for instance, you're one of those, right? Well, the purpose, it isn't, that you, it isn't that you just like what I say about Obama, but don't like what I say about Trump. What it is is that you are looking for a reason to support Trump. It isn't that you don't like it. It's just that you don't like the fact that I'm saying something about it. It isn't that what I'm saying is wrong. Let me put it that way. It isn't what I'm saying is wrong or indifferent. You know it's right. But you have, you've lived your life or you've come up or you've been raised with a doctrine that you can really live in a false reality. That's where you are. You've been raised in a doctrine that you can live in a false reality. That is to say you can like the truth about Obama but you don't like the truth about Trump. And it's the same truth. It's the same truth. There's no difference. But because you have been indoctrinated to live in a false reality, you are really a person who needs psychological debriefing. But trust me, there are zillions of people around the world who live that way. I, there are people who know what I'm saying about Trump. Obama is right. They know it. But they choose to ignore it based on the fact that they find a reality that isn't true and they've settled in there. Say, so that's one of the reasons why I've not made a commitment because, you know, I, I, I don't like, the fact, I wish you would support what I support. But the, the truth of the matter is, then why do you come? You've given three years or more of your life to listen to me? Three years of your life to listen to me, and you know you and you're not tired of listening to me yet. And you've given three years of your life, and over the past three years, your life has been greatly upgraded. You've learned, you've been educated, you've been enlightened. And let me say this to you. If you make the commitment, say, well, Pastor, I'm joining with you, and I'm going to support. I'm going to do the tithing offering. I'm going to do the first fruit. I'm going to keep the Sabbath. Your life is going to soar. Now, listen to me very carefully. Now, I'm not going to leave you alone after this. Listen to me very carefully. You come as often as you come over the past three years because you're being helped. You're being educated. You're being enlightened. Right? Right. But the thing that you... Like whether you, you say, well, I like what you say about Obama, but I don't like what you say about Trump. You do the same thing with the word of God, such as you like the things I say, the teachings that I say, the way I explain the Bible, the way I break it all down and make it clear. But when it comes to things like money or tithing and offering or the Sabbath, well, that you know is also true, but because of your false reality, because you really need a psychological debriefing, because of your false reality, you choose not to believe the tithe or the first fruit or the Sabbath. Now, it isn't that it isn't true. It's as true as all the other things I've said. But you live in a false reality where you, avoid, you try to ignore the truth about the tithe. And so you don't do it. But, that is not, but the, everything else I say is good to go. Everything I ever say is good to go. Good enough to share with your friends. It makes you laugh. It educates you. It enlightens you. But the tithe? Well... And the full commitment to the ministry, well, the first fruit offerings, well, the Sabbath. That, that's all true as well. But you have chosen and you've been raised and indoctrinated to have a dual reality, which is dangerous. Jesus said this, and I'll leave you. He said, I would rather you be the hot or cold, but not lukewarm. You're lukewarm. You have a dual reality. He said, if you're lukewarm, I'll spit you out of my mouth. I would rather you be completely stomped down against Pastor Manny, trying to, just, trying to take him down. Be fully against him. Be against him with all of your strength. 
or be fully for him with all of your strength. But don't be in the middle somewhere lukewarm. You're no better than to be spit out of the mouth of Jesus if you're lukewarm. So what's it going to be? You're going to make the commitment and grow and be even greatly better blessed or you're going to continue to walk in the lukewarm spit of the mouth of the Savior. I'm James David Manning, everybody. I'm the Lord's servant.